Dead Space 3, Fire Emblem Awakening, FIFA 14, Tomb Raider, Batman Arkham Origins, Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, GTA 5, Rise Son of Rome, Forza Motorsport 5, God of War Ascension, Gears of War Judgment, Halo Spartan Assault, Battlefield 4 and Gran Turismo 6 are just some of the games, and these are only from 2013, that all have one specific thing in common. They are all full priced games that have insulting DLC or intrusive microtransactions. Strap yourselves in folks, this is going to be a long one. Does anyone remember a time where, when you bought a game, you actually got the full thing that was on the disc? None of this paying money to get extra weapon skins or experience boosts. It all just used to be on the disc and fully unlockable in-game without all the bullshit. My oh my how things change as gaming evolves, and the large companies see us more and more as pawns to exploit for a quick buck. So let's slow down and take this one step at a time. Starting with part one, the good DLC. So DLC is just the shortened version of the term downloadable content. Usually DLC provides a way to add more content and gameplay hours to a video game, be it whole expansions, map packs, character skins, new weapons, or whatever. So what's so bad about DLC? Well, there's nothing inherently wrong with the idea of it. In fact, when it's done right, it really does add to the game. So the problem is not with what DLC is, but more how game publishers decide to use it and implement it. So before we move into some examples of companies that like to implement just offensive use of DLC, I would like to dedicate a bit of time to some DLC that is actually very good, that sets the precedent for how amazing it can be. Immediately the Elder Scrolls Skyrim DLCs come to mind, Dragonborn and Dawnguard, because not only is there a huge amount of content added, but it's a real expansion. Particularly Dragonborn, which adds a huge new island for you to explore. Bethesda have the right idea when it comes to downloadable content. Fallout 3 and the Elder Scrolls games have had some truly amazing DLC that really adds to the game and provides a new experience you would not have got otherwise. Another fantastic DLC from a different studio is the Freedom Cry expansion for Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. Again, not only does it add a whole new map filled with locations to explore, but it also has 4 hours or more of content with a great story. Similarly, the Bioshock Infinite Burial at Sea add-on is equally entertaining. Sure, it might not have the pure amount of gameplay hours that the two previously mentioned expansions had, but the hours that you spend exploring Rapture again is definitely worth the price of admission. Rockstar also have a very good attitude towards DLC, my personal favourite of theirs being the absolutely incredible Undead Nightmare expansion for Red Dead Redemption. Rockstar have also released full expansions for GTA 4 that have had enough content in them to warrant being called full games on their own. An additionally honourable mention is to Mass Effect 2 and 3. While I've not played through all of Mass Effect 3's DLC, I can safely say that some of the content Bioware add to their games are truly substantial. If the fantastic Lair of the Shadow Broker and Overlord DLCs from Mass Effect 2 are anything to go by. However, Bioware with the Mass Effect series also commits the cardinal sin of what can make DLC just awful. But more on that later. Hey, um, uh, you kinda leave me out here, buddy. Am I not gonna have my own weird subplot this episode? And what about the DLC for Aquaman Battle for Atlantis? That was pretty good. Oh, my apologies, my lord and saviour. But I've got too much to cover to fill time with your pathetic spandex suit, blonde hair, and just... everything. Just seeing your face makes me want to punch a... punch a puppy. And just for the record, there was no DLC for that stained sensory offence excuse for a video game. And even if there was, the three people who bought it wouldn't have cared anyway. So please, just f*** off. Well, no need to be a dick about it. Right, sorry about that. So DLC has definitely been used effectively in the past. But did you see a pattern in the types of games I previously mentioned? It was only a small amount of certain developers and a certain style of game that would lend itself to worthwhile DLC. So enough beating around the bush, let's get into the f***ing bullshit. Part 2. The dog side of DLC. There are two main types of terrible DLC. You have the totally overpriced garbage that should either be free or at least cheaper, these primarily being map packs for multiplayer centric games, 
And you also have the day one, blatantly ripped straight from the game, bullshit DLC that these companies have the nerve to charge full price for. As far as the first type of awful DLC I mentioned is concerned, games like Call of Duty and Battlefield are some of the worst culprits. They have a completely moronic season pass scheme where they try and fool you into thinking you're getting a good deal, but in fact, they're just turning you over and pretty much defiling you right then and there. Even if you are saving 15% or whatever it is on the overpriced DLC season pass, you're still paying for an overpriced DLC season pass. So check this total bollocks out. So Battlefield 3 released their first bullshit map pack, back to Kirkland or some shit. <laughs> before their season pass scheme known as Battlefield Premium was released. So when Premium was released, all the people who had already bought the first DLC were effectively forced into buying it twice if they wanted Premium. And you didn't get a discount if you already owned the original map pack. Oh no, that would be just too much to ask for. And even despite this, I know multiple people who still went ahead and got Premium, even after EA had f***ed them with overcharging for their dumb service and content they didn't even end up liking in the end. Speaking of season passes, that's another thing I'm getting pretty tired of. Not every game needs a f***ing season pass. I know these companies want people to stay playing their games for as long as possible, but offering a season pass for total dog like Colonial Marines is not exactly going to entice people into staying with the game. And as much as I love the Freedom Cry DLC, the trailers for it were being advertised even before Assassin's Creed 4 had been released. These season passes are up so quickly that it does nothing but infuriate people who did buy them because they have to wait around for the developers to actually make the damn content. It's just completely unnecessary. And when it comes down to map packs for multiplayer games, I find that it doesn't really do anything but completely ruin how the multiplayer functions. Because you either end up with a system like Halo 3 where you have to own the DLC to even play multiplayer, or the flip side like Halo Reach where everyone is just put into the same search. So the chance of playing on the DLC maps were extremely slim because you had to rely on all 16 people owning it. So back to the other issue with content that is blatantly ripped from the full game. EA and Capcom are the main culprits of this shit. I mentioned earlier that Mass Effect 2 commits a cardinal sin on this very point. Well, in Mass Effect 2, they had certain areas in your ship completely blocked off to you because they were DLC. And their only reasoning for this is that they didn't want people buying used copies of the game, so you had to buy it new to get all the content. However, while Mass Effect 2's Day 1 DLC was mildly irritating at best, Mass Effect 3's Day 1 DLC really took the f***ing piss. So Mass Effect 3 had a Day 1 DLC that had content I would argue is integral to the overall plot of the game. This is in the final chapter of an epic trilogy and they shamelessly ripped important content straight from the game just so they could get the extra £10 or $15. And to add insult to injury, it was not even free if you got the game brand new. It's shameful. It really is. Capcom are almost even worse. There are whole controversies you can look up about this shit they pull with some of their games. But at this point, who even gives a shit about Capcom? Seriously. By the way, that was a rhetorical question. If you do like Capcom, then good for you. Doesn't mean I have to give a shit about them though. This whole DLC thing has actually led me onto something else that is equally horrendous that more and more developers are shamefully cramming into their games. Yep, I couldn't go any longer without bringing up microtransactions. Part 3. The good microtransactions. Okay, but seriously, just quickly for those who don't know, microtransactions are, well, when you can pay for something menial in a game you could earn legitimately, but you're too lazy so you'll waste your money on buying coin packs or random crates or whatever it may be. Now, I hate to say it, but microtransactions do have their place, mainly in the mobile games industry, of course. But for free games like Jetpack Joyride or even Killer Instinct, it completely makes sense and is a pretty good business move. However... This is not what I have the problem with. Part 4. The insulting dog side to microtransactions. So what I do have a problem with is when our full price £40 or $60 games have forced in microtransactions that are pushed right in front of you to try and tempt you to buy them. You know, honestly, I would not really have a problem with it if they just would give me the option to hide it away. Sure, companies, I know you make enough money from morons being lazy for it to be completely worth it for you. 
but think about how intrusive and irritating it is to be tortured by the fact that you know that you've worked hard to earn something legitimately when someone else has just dished out some cash to get quick and instant satisfaction. The game that truly pissed me off the most recently is Halo Spartan Assault for the Xbox One and Xbox 360. It's a shitty port of a tablet game that still costs the same amount as any good downloadable game, yet the game is completely unrewarding because it's built entirely around barely being compensated for your gameplay, so you feel enticed to spend money on bullshit credits so you can actually have some fun with the overpriced one-time use weapons and abilities you have to buy. Christ, this makes me so f***ing mad, how they just treat us like total garbage with no integrity for their art at all. Part 5. The Wrap Up So there we go, I've told you all there is about what I think about DLC and microtransactions and why they can be pure shite. It's a shame that these huge companies with plenty of money try desperately to nickel and dime us for a quick buck without any real work on their end. Gaming is still a relatively new medium in the grand scheme of things, and Christ, the mere fact that GTA 5 sold $1 billion worth in three days proves that we're a huge and dependable audience with plenty of money to invest because we love it and enjoy it so much. Let's hope these larger companies will evolve in the right direction and actually trust us to support content that is quality, so we get more of this and less of this. Part 6. The End so what do you think about this whole DLC thing? What do you think is the best or worst DLC? Do you think microtransactions are, or day one DLC are going to be going away anytime soon? Leave it in the comments below and the best answers will be featured at the end of the next video. I dare you to play a drinking game with this video where you drink every time I say the word DLC. You die, you be dead, that'd be it. So as always, thanks for watching, bye.